Good morning. It's great to see you here today. Great to see me here today. There's plenty of me to see. Are we ready to worship the Lord together today? First, I wanted to mention a couple of things. First of all, of course, we're so glad the TV group is with us this morning. They're a part of our worship, and we're so glad that you're here with us today in person. Um, Linda Georgia and Rick, uh, brother and Rick Bradford's uncle, Raymond Bradford, passed away Friday night. So we need to be in prayer for them and their family as, uh, as they go through this difficult time. And also, we want to remember Pat Carter as she is um, having tests done and we don't know what the prognosis is, but uh, we are sure the Lord is going to be taking care of her. So be in prayer for Pat. Also, we had 38 families take advantage of the food pantry uh, this week, which is really amazing, isn't it? So we want to give, let's give a round of applause to all those volunteers who showed up and made that happen. Let's say together our call to worship. It's found in your bulletin. O come, let us sing to the Lord and shout with joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into God's presence with thanksgiving, singing joyful songs of praise. What shall we return to the Lord for all the good things God has done for us? Oh, praise the Lord with me. Let us exalt God's name together. Please stand as we sing this great hymn with a powerful message. Number 379, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less Than Jesus' Blood and Righteousness. Than Jesus' blood and righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest frame But wholly lean on Jesus' name On Christ the solid rock I stand All other ground is sinking sand All other ground is sinking sand When darkness veils his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. His oath, his covenant, his blood Support me in the whelming flood When all around my soul gives way He then is all my hope and stay On Christ the solid rock I stand All other ground is sinking sand All other ground is sinking sand shall come with trumpet sound, oh may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. And you may be seated. Here now are our prayers of confession, beginning with the call to confession. We know that we have not lived according to God's desires for us. The brokenness in the world and the sin and despair in our hearts threaten to consume us as a mighty flood. Yet God is our hope and our firm foundation. Let us confess our sin before our gracious God. And now together, creating God, in love you moved over the waters of chaos and separated the sea from dry land. 
And yet we cling tightly to rigid boundaries of our own making. You claim us in the waters of baptism and declare us dead to sin and alive in Christ. But too often we deny that call, conforming ourselves to the whims of culture. Transform us, we pray. Soften the unyielding edges of our hearts. Loosen our grip on the way it's always been and prepare us for the joy of the way it still can be through Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends, hear the good news. Jesus Christ is our ark. His power is unequaled. His grace is unrestrained. His strength is steadfast, and his embrace is sufficient to carry all that we are and hope to be. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. going around the internet for a while, but um, here's what one thing is saying these days about Noah. All you need to know comes from Noah. Number one, don't miss the boat. Two, travel in pairs. Three, when you are stressed, float for a while. And finally, remember the Titanic was built by professionals the ark by amateurs. That really went over great. I'm glad that we did that. Hear now God's word. This is found in Genesis chapter 6 and through 8, but I'm only going to read some of the verses. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time, and he walked faithfully with God. He had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Jepheth. Now the lower earth was corrupt in God's sight and was full of violence. God saw how corrupt the earth had become, for all the people on earth had corrupted their ways. So God said to Noah, I'm going to put an end to all people, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. I'm surely going to destroy both them and the earth. So... Make yourself an ark of cypress wood. Make rooms in it and coat it with pitch inside and out. This is how you are to build it. The ark is to be 300 cubits long, 50 cubits wide, and 30 cubits high. Make a roof for it, leaving below the uh, roof and opening one cubit high all around. Put a door in the side of the ark and make lower, middle, and upper decks. I'm going to bring floodwaters on the earth to destroy all life under the heavens, every creature that has the breath of life in it. Everything on earth will perish. But I will establish my covenant with you, and you will enter the ark, 
you and your sons and your wife and your sons' wives with you. You are to bring into the ark two of all living creatures, male and female, to keep them alive with you, two of every kind of bird, every kind of animal, and every kind of creature that moves along the ground will come to you to be kept alive. You are to take every kind of food that is to be eaten and store it away as food for you and for them. And Noah did everything just as God commanded him. The waters flooded the earth for 150 days. By the 27th day of the second month, the earth was completely dry. Then God said to Noah, Come out of the ark, you and your wife and your sons and their wives. Bring out every kind of living creature that is with you, the birds, the animals, and all the creatures that move along the ground, so they can multiply on the earth and be fruitful and increase in number on it. So Noah came out together with his sons and his wife and his sons' wives, all the animals and all the creatures that move along the ground and all the birds, everything that moves on land, came out of the ark, one after another. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, we thank you for the truth in this story and thank you for the way it challenges us. And we ask, Lord, that it might become a part of what we do and what, who we are not just we said what we say. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, basically, I want to talk to you this morning about what we can learn from Noah, specifically about building a boat, a refuge, a way to make it through difficult times when the flood of life comes down upon us. If you're going to be on the water, you need a really good boat. So how can we be sure for ourselves that we'll have a good boat that can survive a difficult time like we're going through. This is what we're going to learn today. Once upon a time, uh, an atheist guy died. You know, he was a jogger. He liked to run a lot, and people thought he would live forever, but he did not, and so he jogged up to the pearly gates, and he spoke to Peter. And Peter said, If you can tell me who the Son of God is, what his name is, then you can get into heaven. And the man thought for a moment, and he said, could it be Andy? And Peter said, Andy? He said, yes, because every time I walk, run past the church, I hear him saying, and he walks with me, and he talks with me. <laughs> See, the first joke didn't work, so I had them do another one. To... <laughs> first... We need, we need to be people that walk with God. The scriptures tell us that Noah walked with God. I don't know about you, but as you get older, they say that you begin to resemble your spouse. Most of us go horrors, not that, anything but that. But we tend to, we tend to get to, to be like the people that we're around, don't, don't we? Um, we? We begin to finish each other's sentences. Uh, we begin to talk uh, in the same way and have the same kind of way of doing things. And it's that association with another person that's really close. It has such a huge impact on our lives. And I believe that's what happened to, to Noah. He, he was walking with God throughout his life so that when the crisis came, he knew he could trust God. And brothers and sisters, that's really what we need to do. We need to be people that are walking with God not people who are, cheer, who are pursuing what the world has, people who live alone, uh, people that are chasing their own desires and their dreams. Instead, we need to be in lockstep with God if we want to, for, if we want to survive the flood. There was a man named Charles Templeton who, in the beginning, was with Billy Graham. Though we don't really know why, he lost his faith in a way. He wandered away from following Jesus. And so um, uh, Lee Strobel was writing his books, and so he went to see uh, Charles Templeton and, uh, and just talked to him. He, asked, he said, what do you miss the most about Christianity? And he said, I miss being friends with Jesus Christ. And a tear rolled down his face. So this is what we're talking about. If you want to be able to survive the flood, you need to walk with Jesus you need to walk with God, you need to have that relationship and build it 
and get it to be stronger so that our friendship with Jesus can sustain us in the hard times. And so I think that's why God chose uh, Noah. That's why God entrusted Noah with the job of continuing on the history of human beings. It was because he knew him from walking with him. I know there's a lot of folks around this church and also just out there in the world who are talking about steps. I didn't get my steps in today. Oh, I doubled up. My, my wife is the worst. She has to tell me every day that she did five million steps. You know, I'm stepping back and forth from the refrigerator. But she's, she's out there walking miles and miles. But I think what happens is that if you walk with somebody, it's hard not to get to know them. I know a lot of y'all get together and walk during the week up here at the church, or maybe you have other friends that you like to walk with, or a spouse, or, or whatever, but it's just really important, I think, that you walk with someone, and that you walk with them, and you get used to doing that. People that walk with God make boats that float. Secondly, Noah was willing to follow instructions. Okay, now I know a lot of you guys, guys especially, when you open up a package, the first thing you do is throw away the directions. Because you think you don't need those directions. Uh-oh, he's, he's, he's guilty over here. Um, it's just, you know, we just think we can do anything. We can put stuff together ourselves. We, can, we don't need no stinking directions, right? What scares me, though, is when I put things together, all the pieces that are left over... I know I really blew it. <laughs> Somewhere that, that thing that I made is not going to make it. Well, one day we got one of these, uh, these bookshelves or TV console shelves. I don't know if it was Ikea, but it was something like that. And so I commenced to work uh, to put that together. And uh, three hours later, I called my, uh, my, my son's wife. I called my, uh, you know, my daughter-in-law. I said, Bazzi, you've got to come help me. Because it's well known that she has a three-dimensional ability to put things together. And though it was embarrassing, I asked for her help. And sure enough, she had it done in about 35 minutes. You know? <laughs> and everybody, every time I'm in that room with one of the kids or part of the family, they'll say, there's that shelf that, that Pop-Pop couldn't put together that Bazzy did in 35 minutes. But the truth is, if we follow the directions, if we do the things that God tells us to do, if we're obedient to the things that he has for us, that even, even though they're fantastic and crazy and wild, then we'll be able to build a good boat that holds up. Um, but following the instructions is really important. Um, by the way, watch out for those leftover parts. So Noah walked with God. And Noah was willing to follow the instructions of putting things together, even crazy as they were. And next, Noah endured the flood. He was willing to go through whatever he had to go through and not abandon ship. I know a lot of folks probably wanted to abandon ship during this pandemic. They didn't want to keep going. They just got tired of it, and they wanted it to stop. And, you know, I'm one of them. I, I really have been fighting my depression during this time. But I think it's because, you know, I, I, I really know deep in my heart the truth of the fact that God is not going to let me go. And so because of that, I can get through these times, the difficult ones as they come. Because you've got to realize that this was a difficult time, not just because of the water outside, but because of the smell inside. Can you imagine all those animals? How many of you are farmer fam from farmer families or remember farms the way they were? I mean, people who are farmers get up at 5 o'clock in the morning, not just because that's a fun thing to do. They do it because that's to get all the work done that they have to get done that takes all day long and some extra. Farming is very intensive kind of work. And so here they are in this place with all these animals, with just a small group of people, I don't know how they did it. How did they keep all those animals going? So it wasn't just the flood on the outside and how long it was taking and the fact that they were all together. It was the fact that it was pretty smelly inside and also put that many family members in a small space together. And that's not going to be easy either. Families have sometimes a hard time getting along. But Noah was willing to endure it. You know, it's... Uh, 
It's true, this is true in another way too. We're all in the same boat, folks. We're all in the same boat. We forget that. We think people don't know what I'm going through or they shouldn't be feeling that way. They should be feeling this way, which is the right way. The truth is, is that we forget that you and I are all in the same boat. And I think that Noah remembered that and Noah endured whatever came his way because he believed in what God was doing. You know, uh, Noah's kind of a difficult story because so many people perished. And we know that they perished because they were wicked to the core. You know, we see, we see a lot of, we hear a lot of the things that were going on pre-Noah and, and they were terrible. And yet it's really hard for us to accept the fact that all those people died in the flood. People really struggle with this story. But for me, the only way I can grab hold of it is to know that there are two things going on. One is this backdrop of the flood, this backdrop of a corrupt world, a backdrop of things going wrong, uh, you know, all the stuff that's been happening in people's lives across the world is a terrible, terrible thing. We don't want to ignore it. We don't just want to condemn the people who are going through it. But we must know that there is still a purpose behind it all, but it's not easy to grab hold of it. But that's sort of the upper track of things. That's the background of things. And in the foreground of things, we have Noah and his personal relationship with God, where he talked with God and walked with God and trusted God through all the difficult things that happened. So in the, in the, the micro vision that was going on gave them the strength to get through the macro vision. By staying, you know, in their relationship with God, they're able to get through the hard and difficult times that they're going through. And I think that's one way of thinking about it. God is, is in the business of being sovereign and holy and doing what, what must be done to preserve life. But he's also in the business of knowing us and what we're going through. He's also in the business of loving us where we are we know that because he sent Jesus Christ to die for us. And we know that he cares about us, right, where we are, what we're going through, and will not let us go. And so I think our job, mostly, is to let God be God and be sovereign and unfold his plan for the universe and try to be what we're supposed to be, which is friends with God, to walk where he walked and the way he walked, to live our lives as a reflection of his glory. This is God's calling for us in this world. So we're to walk with God, we are to follow the instructions, and we are to endure the floods knowing what's happened. Once upon a time, uh, David Pierce and 15 teenagers sat, on a bike, sat out on a bike trip. I was a youth pastor at that time, and we were going to ride our bikes. I lived in Virginia Beach at the time, and so we were going to ride down the Outer Banks and camp along the way and get to know God better. And it was supposed to be this great experience of kind of stress camping, which was really big back then. A lot of people liked to go climb mountains together or, or rappel or canoe or go on a bike trip. And so we felt like we had to do that. And that was one of the worst weeks of my life. You name it, we had it happen. We had people uh, have allergic reaction to bee stings. We had people that we thought maybe had had, had pulled muscles. Uh, we took people to the hospital. We had people fighting with each other. <laughs> it was just a terrible, terrible week in every way. And it, as a youth pastor, I just was overwhelmed by it. But we got we my finally made it to the night before we were going to ride back in the church parking lot in triumph. We were so excited. We were thinking this was going to end strong, and we were going to be able to, to to end it up in a great way. The thing was, our last camping site went under three feet of water that night. We were supposed to get up in the morning and ride back to the church, but the entire campground was filled with soggy sleeping bags and even soggier people. And they were not in the best of moods either with their youth pastor and with the situation. Neither were their parents happy when we called them at four o'clock in the morning and told them to come pick up their children at the church because we had, we had given up and we had transported the kids all back to the church, and they were 
waiting for their parents to pick them up in the middle of the night. It's a testimony to that church and maybe a little bit to the sort of ability I had to build some good rapport with people that I didn't get fired. And it was like that. You know, you've passed her sometimes. Uh, we find creative ways to get fired. But I, I didn't get fired. And so I got some of those kids together later on that summer just for a sort of reflection time of what had happened. And they said that was the most life-changing week they'd ever had in their lives. In spite of everything that happened and all the stress we were under and the terrible ending, they said that they got to know God better through that than any other thing else that we'd ever done. They got, the, got it right. The backdrop of who God is and what God does gives us the strength and ability to put our trust in that God. And no matter what happens, we make it through. The big backdrop, which we have a hard time understanding, but we know has to do with God's sovereign will. And then the foreground, our ability to love and care for one another. So that's the way we build our boat. We walk with God. We're willing to follow his instructions by getting into his word and letting it transform us. We endure the floods. We keep going because what's outside is much worse than what's inside. We need each other. We need to keep going. And finally, to celebrate what God does. Sometimes things may blow up, but in the midst of the blowing up, we find out that God is in charge, and it's a rainbow time. You know, maybe you don't use rainbows as a way of reminding you of God's grace and love for you, um, but every time I see a rainbow, I'm reminded of this story, that God said he will never do that again. He will never flood the earth again. He will never destroy human beings utterly. And that he promises to, to help us through the difficult times. Maybe you have a time in your life when you remember. Maybe it was at the campground. Maybe it was another time in your life, which is sort of a rainbow time for you. And when you get, through, get into these difficult times that you go through, you can go to that place and remind yourself of how much God loves you and how he will never, ever give up on you. And that's the good news of the gospel, brothers and sisters. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our hymn is 391, Take My Life and Let It Be Consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Let's stand together as we sing. 391. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take It shall be. 
You may be seated. Brothers and sisters, let us say what we believe. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Shall we pray together? O oh Lord, I know that we are all in the same boat. We are all lost without you, and yet we find such sweet refuge in you. I know there are people in our church who are struggling with health problems, relationship problems, with, with um, finding what is your will for them in this time of their life. And I know, Lord, that it's just not easy to be a parent or a grandparent. It's hard to help, help children to find their way. But, Lord, we thank you that there is a place of safety for all of us, and that is your ark, that your son, Jesus Christ, that we can go and find that safe place that place where we know we are loved and that we are not forgotten and where we will find help. And so I pray for all those who are feeling sad or lonely. Lord, may they know you are there. And for all those who are feeling happy and strong and feeling your grace touching them, let them know that it all comes from you. And strengthen all of us, Lord, to be the kind of people that you've called us to be. As we say together that prayer that you taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I want to take a moment and just say thank you for the generosity that, the, that you've had for the church during this time. You've recognized that God's work goes on, even in the time of a pandemic. And I thank you for that. But continue to be generous in your giving as we begin to think about what we'll do next, those things that God has called us to do. And so we ask that you be generous. Lord, we thank you for what you have given to us. We thank you for the way in which you provided for us everything that we need. And Lord, we pray that we would be good stewards of that, both in our giving and in our living. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's voice our commitment to follow the Lord as we sing hymn number 387, Savior Like a Shepherd Lead Us. Let's stand together as we sing. Savior, like a shepherd, lead us, much we need thy tender care. In thy pleasant pastures feed us, for our use thy folds Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, thou hast bought us thine we are. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, thou hast bought us thine we are. Thou hast promised to receive us. Sin 
of the Lord Jesus Christ and the presence and the person of the Holy Spirit go with you both now and forever. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.